G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and today we're going to be talking about some of the teams that are not part of this final series. Obviously there's only four teams left, so that's most of them. But what we're going to do is try and isolate some of the teams that were the most disappointing this season in terms of comparing it against their pre-season expectations. What was the actual outcome of this year? Obviously, I've done a, a season review for the 10 non-finalists, but this video will uh, broaden a little bit to include some of the finalists and talk about how, to what extent, this season was disappointing for them. I've actually got six teams I want to talk about in this video, and I'm going to do it in ascending order, which means I'm going to start with a team that I think wasn't that disappointing, but still a disappointment nonetheless, all the way through to the team that I think was the most disappointing this year. And to be honest, I could have included more teams in this. A lot of teams misfired this year, and a lot of teams improved rapidly. So I'll just take you through the six that I've isolated and then mention there's probably about four other teams that I am deliberately leaving out of this video and I will clarify why. Every year teams are going to be disappointed. You know, there's in theory 17 teams that will be disappointed every year if they don't win the premiership. But obviously everything's relative. You take into account preseason expectations and look at their list management moves going into this season, which indicate their mindset. And basically we'll just go through why I think they were disappointing this year. The first team I want to isolate as the probably the least disappointing but nonetheless still make this list is the Melbourne Football Club who of course just went out in straight sets, exited the semi-final uh, after a two-point loss to Carlton. Now on paper, you know, it's a very solid season. They did finish fourth and uh, they were certainly in the mix and considered an outside contender for the premiership going into this final series but obviously went out in straight sets and therefore I think this qualifies as a pretty disappointing outcome for the Melbourne Footy Club. Now it's not as simple as saying, oh, they went out in straight sets, therefore they have failed and they are a disappointment because going out in straight sets is a not completely infrequent occurrence in the AFL but when you consider the context of the Melbourne Footy Club you know in 2021 they commanded their way to a 71 point grand final win over the Bulldogs they were fantastic I commented at the time it was one of the most dominant teams I'd ever seen play looking at their list profile and the talent they still had you know at the peak of their powers and in theory is still at the peak of their powers I thought we were setting up to see a Melbourne rampage for a number of seasons yet but it hasn't been such a happy tale since that 2021 Premiership. In fact, their finals performances since then have left a lot to be desired. They've played in four finals since then and they've lost all of them, which means they're 0-4 in finals through that period, which is a little bit heartbreaking as well when you consider that, you know, the, the, a lot of the Melbourne fans didn't even get to see Melbourne up close in 2021. At least throughout that final series, of course, they didn't play at the MCG on grand final day. And since then, they've had all four of their grand finals at the MCG and haven't been able to get a win on the board. And of course, you look a little bit deeper and you look at some of the scores that they've had in finals, 71 against Carlton, 53 against Collingwood. That's just this year. 79 against Brisbane was their best. They still lost that game by 13 points and 69 in last year's qualifying final. Their goal kicking in particular, this final series was particularly poor. It was arguably the reason they didn't make it through. Seven goals, 11 against Collingwood and uh, what was it? Nine goals, 17 against Carlton. That's 16 goals, 28 in their two finals this year, which is far from ideal. And when you consider this team should have been gearing up for a genuine premiership assault, you know, a prelim probably would have been a C for them. So go out in straight sets, I think uh, is very disappointing and therefore they qualify as one of the more disappointing teams this year. Next, we'll talk about Fremantle, another team that is undoubtedly disappointing this year. And there will be Fremantle fans that are a little bit defensive of this claim. And that's why I've got them early in the video, because I, I will caveat that with the idea that they did still get some improvement out of this year. But when you consider they went from fifth to fifth last, even the most optimistic Fremantle fan can't say they're disappointed with that outcome. Sure, there were some mitigating factors. You know, much has been said about the experience that uh, Fremantle lost last offseason. They lost a host of, you know, uh, maybe not absolute, you know, top 10 on the list players, but a lot of players that that were important to their depths, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, their best 25, it got a lot weaker when you consider Griffin Logue, Blake Akers, Rory Lobb, Darcy Tucker, um, Lloyd Meek. Again, you know, Lloyd Meek wasn't cracking a game, but a lot of semi-mature uh, experienced players that added to their depth that all left the list at the same time, and it arguably had an impact on how well Fremantle did this year. Look, there were a lot of positives for Fremantle this year. You know, the emergence of Jai Amos. I think the Luke Jackson recruitment worked well. He kicked 22 goals as, you know, a player that we're still trying to work out exactly what he is, but whatever he did at Fremantle this year seemed to work. Caleb Sarong had an outstanding year, and you also factor in Fremantle are an extremely young list. They're still, I can think, bottom four in terms of experience at one point this year. But there was still a huge gap between their best and their worst. On their best, they were beating good teams 
away from home at their worst. They were losing to North, the Dogs, Carlton really poorly at home. While there was some growth for Fremantle in some aspects, you have to label them a disappointing team this year and they'll want to do a lot better next season. Next, we'll talk about the Gold Coast Suns, who undoubtedly had a disappointing season, and that is best evidenced by the fact that they replaced their coach. And you'd have to say it was a pretty big upgrade. No disrespect to Stewie Jew, but Damien Hardwick is one of the best coaches you could possibly get. But, you know, it is it was another disappointing season from the Gold Coast Suns, whose list is starting to mature, and we've seen at their best. They are very good. They smashed the Brisbane Lions at Metricon Stadium this year. They also had wins over Geelong, uh, the Dogs in Darwin. They won at Marvel against Richmond, who at the time looked a lot better than they were. But again... Another example of a team whose gap between their best and worst uh, is quite poor. And they also dropped by three spots in a year where we thought they were on the precipice of really pushing for finals. So again, this point is kind of already made by the fact that they replaced their coach. And I just think to finish fourth last, they finished in the bottom four. Their preseason expectation should have been at least top 10, which would have been you know their best ever finish to slide back into the bottom four. With the amount of talent they have that is starting to mature, I think is a disappointing outcome for the Gold Coast Suns. So they're the mind next most disappointing. Next, I'll highlight the Western Bulldogs for having a pretty disappointing season this year. Again, the uh, the pressure and the response from the fans kind of makes this point for me. I think uh, a lot of Dogs fans are pretty filthy with the outcome of missing finals in the way that they did, particularly when it largely was due to the fact that they lost to West Coast at Marvel Stadium. They finished ninth on the ladder, which is not a horrendous place to finish. Having said that, though, this is a team that under Beveridge has never finished in the top four. They have won a premiership. They've made two grand finals, but their home and away form has left a lot to be desired, particularly when you consider how talented this team is. And Marcus Bontempelli is on their list. This is their window. The prime years of Marcus Bontempelli should be this team's premiership window. At times this year, I think they really threatened to be one of the best teams outside the top four. And we know that historically, when they make finals, they have been a dangerous side, but they limped home at the end of the year. Their performances against other quality teams, such as, you know, the Demons in round one, the Saints in round two, those were two pretty poor losses. They lost to the Hawks later in the year, obviously lost to West Coast. GWS has emerged as a very good team, but the Dogs were six goals up in that game. To be seven and three at one point this year and then blow finals makes them one of the most disappointing teams this year for sure. I think this group is capable of a lot more. I'm sure their fans agree. But for whatever reason, they haven't just had that killer instinct for a little while. Next, I'll talk about North Melbourne, who are undoubtedly one of the most disappointing teams this year, which might uh, some people might hear that and challenge it because North Melbourne have obviously been poor for a little while now. But for me, I think there was a real potential for North Melbourne to really at least climb up a gear this year. And um, maybe they didn't regress, but they didn't get a whole lot better, if at all. You know, with Clarkson uh, obviously taking over as head coach, and then a couple of mature players onto the list in Logue and Tucker and obviously some great draft picks. Harry Sheasel won their best and fairest. So in terms of list talent and coaching potential, this list got better. Yet we saw after the first two rounds where they started real red hot. They beat West Coast in what was a good game. They went to Perth and beat Fremantle who finished fifth last year, to then go on a 20-game losing streak and only snap it in the final round uh, against the Gold Coast Suns in a dead rubber. Rather than improving this year when I think they had the tools to do so, they, I believe they stagnated. Sure, they improved. I think they improved their percentage by... I don't know, 10, 15 to 20%. That's a pretty good outcome. They got an extra win and they also avoided the wooden spoon. So superficially, there was some improvement there, but the inconsistency of effort, you know, some of the senior players as well were a lot to blame for that. And I do understand that Clarkson wasn't there. So maybe making the point that Clarkson coming in should have improved them is not a great one when he wasn't there the entire time. I'll concede that. Nonetheless, though, it was a pretty listless uh, season for North Melbourne and undoubtedly another year where the bottom two were way worse than the rest of the competition. And therefore, because they didn't improve when I still think they had the tools to do so, North Melbourne had a disappointing year. The team that I think is the second most disappointing would be Richmond, uh, whose preseason expectations I evaluated to be finals, and I think that is very fair. Well, they finished seventh last year, lost an elimination final away at the Gabba, to then top up with Taranto and Hopper. I know I've made this point pretty laboriously on this channel, but it indicated a mindset to improve in the here and now, to forego the draft last year and this year. They held no first rounder as it currently stands. I think they're going to have to do a big shift in their thinking about this list transition now, because this season was quite a poor outcome and we did see it evidence again by Damien Hardwick burning out in the middle of the year stepping down as coach things didn't go right and that's unfortunate but I think to go from a genuine finals contender last year bolster their midfield in the way they did and then fall 
pretty far from finals. They finished 13th in the end, I think is a very disappointing season, particularly in a year where they don't hold a current first round draft pick. Now that could change. I've talked about that in other videos, but Richmond did not plan at all to be finishing, you know, as low as they did this year as evidenced by their draft position and therefore really disappointing outcome for them to finish as low as they did. And finally, the most disappointing team this year, I have to say, has got to be the West Coast Eagles. Now I'll, I'll clarify that. I'll qualify that. Obviously, no one really expected the Eagles to rise up the ladder this year. In fact, you know what? I'm sure that they were tipped widely to win the wooden spoon as they eventually did. But this particular assessment of West Coast isn't even about ladder position because again, they did technically improve. They had an extra win on last year. Despite mitigating factors, you know, uh, one of the worst injury runs I've ever seen a team cop. What we're really talking about in terms of what was disappointing this year was some of the most pathetic performances an AFL team has put out for at least 10 years. And before that, you're probably going back two or three decades. Thankfully, the Eagles finished their season on a pretty good stretch, you know, but you isolate some of the worst performances this year. They lost five games by 100 points, one of them by 171 points. That was the most abysmal performance I've seen in 10 to 15 years. The effort levels and the drive this year was very, very much found wanting. Um, and like I said, it did improve later in the year, but 122 points against Adelaide. The Western Derby was in the final three rounds of the season. Easily the worst Western Derby performance we've ever seen from a West Coast outfit that had been playing improved football to that point. So I think out of all the teams here, the Eagles certainly took more of a burn in terms of their pride than any other club this year. And while it's a good year to have pick one, I'm, I'm not displeased about that right now. There was a lot of shame brought on the club based on, you know, four or five performances throughout the middle patch of this season. And therefore they are the most disappointing team this year. So that is six disappointing teams that I uh, assessed this year. And uh, like I said, there were a few teams that, you know, you could factor in based superficially, you know, the Cats fell out of the finals, the Power, the Swan, and the Hawks. Now I'll clarify each and every one of those. The Cats obviously went from premiers to missing the finals, but to be honest though, this fall was coming. This is a very aging list and the fact that they didn't bounce back and win it the following year or even make finals, sure it's a blow, but you know, it was inevitable. So I'm not going to mark them too harshly for that. The power also massively improved on last year. Straight sets is disappointing, but obviously there was a lot of growth coming from this year and you give them a chance to back it up next year. The Swans, harsh, they did make finals, but the reason they could be deemed as disappointing is because you know, uh, obviously there was the fact that they made the grand final last year uh, and, you know, some really disappointing efforts in the first half of the season. So, you know, they weren't really ever a serious contender to come into this video, but it was a pretty big fall from Grace from the Swans. And then Hawthorne, obviously, you'd never actually label them a disappointing team this year, but they did drop pretty far on the ladder. So obviously I'm not including them in this video because they did have some really good improvement, beat Collingwood later in the season, beat West Coast by 116 points, which evidenced that they were clearly way better than the worst teams in the comp. There was a lot of growth and improvement from Hawthorne. So naturally completely left them out of this video. Anyway, guys, that is just my thoughts, comments, and opinions on uh, the six most disappointing teams this year. Let me know in the comments uh, what you agree with and disagree with. Is your team one of the teams that I've mentioned in this video? Let me know what you think. And as always, I appreciate you watching the channel. Subscribe to it if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.